Good morning grade 9. This is Miss Teresa. This is a video guide for the standardized test practice chapter 1, a physics toolkit. I hope you tried to answer the practice paper independently before watching this video. Question 1. Two laboratories use radiocarbon dating to measure the age of two wooden spear handles found in the same grave. Lab A finds an age of 2,250 plus minus 40 years for the first object. Lab B finds an age of 2,215 plus minus 50 years for the second object, which is true. So this question is testing your knowledge about precision and accuracy. How do I know that? Because in your choices, you have these words, accurate, precise. So you should know the difference between accuracy and precision. So let's move on to that. The definition of precision is the degree of exactness with which a quantity is measured, whereas accuracy is the extent to which a measurement matches the true value. So if we are going to consider 2000 lab A, okay, for lab A, lab A, the measurements are 2250 plus minus 40 years so the 2250 is your mid value if you add 40 years to that you're going to get 2290 if you will minus 40 from that it's 2210 whereas for lab b lab b the readings are 2,215 plus minus 50 years. So your mid value is 2,215. If you add 50 years to that, it will be 2,265. And then if you minus 50 years from that, it's 2,165. So as you can see, lab A, the values of lab A, the readings of the values of lab A are closer together than lab B. So in this case, lab A's readings are more precise. The answer to this question will be letter C. Question 2. Which of the following is equal to 86.2 centimeters? Basically, this question is about conversion. Okay, so we're going to convert 86.2 centimeter to meters, millimeters, kilometers, and decimeters. Thing is, you can actually do this easily in your calculator, but for discussion's sake, we are going to do it uh, the long way in this board. Okay, so first we're going to change 86.2 centimeters, centimeters to meters. So that will be multiplied to the conversion factor of 100 centimeters. We're going to put centimeters below because we're going to cancel it is equal to 1 meters because we want to change it to meters. So centimeter and centimeter will be cancelled. Now 86.2 divided by 100 is 0 0.862 meters. Okay, which eliminates our letter A answer. That's not the answer. Now we'll change um, 86.2 centimeters. 86.2 centimeters now to Millimeters, there are two steps. We're first going to multiply it to the conversion factor of 100 centimeter to meter. And then after that, we're going to multiply it to the conversion factor of 1 meter is equal to 1000 millimeters because we want to change it to millimeters. Now we can cancel, cancel centimeter and centi centimeter and meter and meter. Then our answer here will be the answer for this will be 862 millimeters, which will eliminate again letter B because it's not equal to that. Now let's go and uh, calculate the, the third one, which is 86.2 um, centimeters. We want to change it to kilometers. We're going to for, first multiply it with the conversion factor 100 centimeters is equal to one meter and then again change meter to kilometer so one kilometer is equal to 1000 meters 
and we can cancel centimeter centimeter meter and meter so using your calculator you'll be able to get the answer 8.62 times 10 raised to negative 4 kilometers so obviously this is the answer letter C okay but for discussion sake I also want to calculate the last one so that you would know how to calculate from centimeter to decimeter 86.2 centimeter times 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter and then again the conversion factor 1 meter is equal to 10 decimeters 10 decimeters we can now cancel meter meter and centimeter centimeter the answer here is equal to 8.62 decimeters so as you can see they are not equal the only one which are equal to the conversion is the third one letter C therefore that's the answer question 3 Ahmed has a problem to do involving time distance and velocity but he has forgotten the formula the question asks him for a measurement in seconds and the numbers that are given have units of meter per second and kilometers what could Ahmed do to get the answer in seconds so in this problem we are required to find the time but there are no numbers given okay so Ahmed has forgotten the formula but of course you shouldn't have forgotten your formula for velocity, distance, and time, this is the equation, V is equal to D divided by T. And we are looking for T, so if we are going to rearrange this formula, T is equal to distance divided by velocity. Now, we don't have any given numbers, so it's safe for us to assume some numbers. Let's say that D distance here is 5,000 kilometers. Okay, let's assume because this is in kilometers and let's say that the V is equal to 5 meters per second. Now what are we going to do? The formula says that T is equal to D divided by V. So T is equal to D which is 5000 kilometers divided by V which is 5 meters per second. Now, if we rearrange this, it'll become 5,000 kilometers multiplied to 1 second divided by 5 meters. Now, we want to change the kilometer to meters, so we are going to multiply it with the conversion factor. 1 kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So, in this case, we'll be able to cancel out kilometer and kilometer and meter and meter we are left with the the unit s okay so what did we do we divided first the distance divided by the uh, velocity so we divided the kilometer by the meter per second and then what did we do next we multiplied 1000 so this is the answer that's a b Question 4. What is the slope of the graph? So this is our given graph over here. We know that the formula for slope m is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. We're going to uh, choose some points over here which are easy for us to read. So for me, I want to use this point and this point. Okay, so the slope of this graph is what we're going to solve. So for our y2, this is our y2, and here is our y1. And then for this, x2 is this one, x2, and this is our x1. Now we're going to substitute m is equal to y2, 3 minus 1, divided by x2 is 12 minus x1 is 4 okay then we're going to get the answer m is equal to using your calculator we're going to get the answer 0 0.25 meters per second square all right so this is our answer the answer is letter a question 5 
Which formula is equivalent to D is equal to M divided by V? Okay, so we want to rearrange this formula. D is equal to M divided by V. If we want to know V, if we want to rearrange it, so D is always over 1. Then if you want to cross multiply, if you cross multiply this, you will get the formula VD is equal to M. Okay, so VD is equal to M. Now look at your choices if you have this and VD is equal to M or M is equal to VD. We don't have that. Now using that, okay, we also have M is equal to VD. We want to find V. So we are going to divide both sides by D. Divide by D. So we can cancel that. Now we are left with V is equal to M divided by D. Is there, in your choices, is there any of the your choices which is equal to this same as this yes we have which is letter a so that's the answer question six a computer simulation is an example of what a hypothesis model a scientific law a scientific theory so as you can see i have listed the definitions of scientific law scientific theory what else? Model and hypothesis over here. So let's read. In this case, we have scientists use models to represent things that may be too small or too large, processes that take too much time to see completely, or a material that is hazardous. A scientific theory is an explanation of things or events based on knowledge gained from observations and investigations. A scientific law is a statement about what happens in nature, which seems to be true all the time. And a hypothesis is a pro possible explanation for a problem using what you know and have observed. So in this case, based on our definitions, a scientific model is the answer, letter B. Because a computer simulation will actually model a uh, process will with, which will take too much time or maybe a scientific model could be drawings in your let's say in some apps you can make drawings of buildings and things so this is a scientific model question seven you want to calculate an acceleration in units of meter per second squared given a force in newton and the mass in gram on which the force acts and it is given here that one Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared question a rewrite the equation F is equal to M a so a is in terms of M and F so in this question we just want to find a okay we are going to isolate isolate a in one side so we're going to divide both sides by m now you can cancel m on one side so a acceleration now is equal to f divided by m all right so how about question b question b over here what conversion factor conversion factor will you need to multiply by to convert grams to kilograms so in this case we are given what no so if example you have grams what conversion factor we want to multiply this with so we will get kilograms so we're going to multiply it by gram and kilogram which one is bigger kilogram is bigger so one kilogram is equal to 1000 grams so your conversion factor is actually this one this is your conversion factor okay letter C a force of 2.7 Newton so F is equal to 2.7 Newton acts on a 350 gram mass so M is equal to 350 grams Okay, that is in grams, so you have to multiply to the conversion factor. 1 kilogram is equal to 1,000 grams, 
so that we will get the mass in kilograms. So if you want to use your calculator, if you use your calculator, you will get the answer 0 0.35 kilograms for your mass. And then write the equation you will use. Of course, we will use the equation A is equal to F divided by M. Including the conversion factor, which we already did over here, to find the acceleration. Okay, so A is equal to F divided by M. F now is 2.7 Newton divided by M, which is 0 0.35 kilogram. So using your calculator, you will get the answer 7.7 .7 meters per second squared. So this is your A, acceleration. So that's all for this video. I hope you have understood everything and how to solve it. There are so many other questions that I've given in your PowerPoint, in your group. So just try and visit those links so that you can practice as much as possible. And good luck to your exams.